If you're considering using Bubble to build your no-code app, you might be concerned about some of the potential risks that come along with that. Like, do you have access to your app's source code? Are you gonna be stuck on Bubble if you decide to use it right now? Who actually owns your IP? and a lot more. Now, if you are choosing a no-code platform, you wanna feel confident as you move forward. And so we're gonna dig into each of those things and more to help you determine whether or not these risks are founded for you and your particular situation and whether or not it makes sense for you to use Bubble. Okay, so here is risk number one. If you decide to use Bubble right now, will you be tied to the platform forever? First, let's just talk through the literal answer. If you start using Bubble now and you build your app, but then later on you want to move your app to a different platform or just not use Bubble anymore but still have your app, you cannot take your app from Bubble and simply transfer it somewhere else. So if you wanted to use a different platform or a programming language in the future, you would have to rebuild your app. Now you would be able to take your app's data and export that, which is obviously the important part. So it's not like you would be starting over completely. You'd have your data, but you would have to rebuild your app. Okay, so now that we have talked through the literal answer, there are a couple other ways you need to be considering this risk. So first off, let's talk about a hypothetical situation. Let's say you could take your Bubble app and simply transfer it over to another no-code platform if you decided to make a change later on. Well, in that hypothetical scenario, I would imagine you would want to be able to understand that new platform so that you could continue building, expanding, managing, maintaining the app over the long run. In order to learn how to do that, you need to learn how to use the no-code platform as a whole. And I would think that rebuilding your app would kind of just make sense to go along with that learning process. So in this hypothetical scenario, you'd still be rebuilding your app. And I personally don't see the thought of having to rebuild your app if for some reason you wanted to switch platforms later on. I don't see that as being a really big risk. But aside from that, it's really important to consider the fact that no matter what path you take right now to build your app, if you ever changed your mind later on, it would always involve some sort of transitional period. So no matter how you build your app now, you're going to be asking yourself whether this is a risk for you, whether you're gonna be tied to this choice right now forever, right? Even if you outsource to a development agency right now, you're gonna be asking, am I gonna be tied to them forever? So no matter what, if you wanted to make a change later, there would be some sort of transitional period involved. To me, this is not a really big risk, but if it's something that's holding you back from making the decision to move forward with your app, then I would ask these three questions. So first off, if you made the decision to move forward with Bubble, for example, what is the best that could happen? Right, so the best probably being, well, you stay on the platform forever and everything is great. You build this business, you generate a lot of revenue and you know everything pans out how you want it to, right? That's the best that could happen. What is the worst that could happen? Well, you end up making a change later on. You wanna leave the platform for whatever reason um, and do something different, okay? That's, that's the worst in this situation. And the third question is, can you live with the worst? Can you live with the potential scenario of going through a transitional period like we talked about at some point in the future? If you can live with it, then for me, I would move forward with the potential best thing that could happen, use the platform, actually build my app, 
and you know maybe never have to go through that transitional period later on. By the way, if you have found any of this helpful so far, you're gonna wanna head to our free extended training over at coachingnocodeapps.com forward slash workshop. It's gonna guide you through the steps you need to take to correctly build and launch your app as a no-code entrepreneur, so make sure to head there next. The next risk that you might be considering is whether you have access to your bubble apps source code should you move forward with the platform. Now to literally answer this question, no, you don't have access to your bubble apps source code. And this obviously plays in well with what we just talked about. You can't download the app's source code and, and take it with you. You can, however, export your app's data and take that with you, which is really the most important thing because the data is something that can't be necessarily recreated in the same way that an app can be. Now, with that being said, there are a couple other things you should consider alongside that more literal answer. So the first is the fact that you don't have access to your source code when using Bubble is the result of you using a platform that is handling most of the heavy lifting for you. So you don't have to deal with your source code. You don't have to deal with hosting. Bubble is really doing all of that for you. And to be honest, most people don't want to have to deal with their source code. And so this is a very big positive. Now, the second thing is to consider the alternative. If using Bubble and not being able to access your source code seems like too big of a risk, well, what is the alternative? There are always going to be compromises involved with any alternative option as well. Some of them could be prohibitive enough to keep you from even being able to move forward with your app at all. So consider the alternative and then weigh the risks. Is the potential what if risk of needing your source code and not being able to download it, is that a bigger risk than potentially not being able to move forward with your app at all because the alternative is just too prohibitive or just involves too many compromises? The next potential risk you may be considering is whether or not Bubble has some sort of ownership over your app. I see people pretty frequently asking whether you actually own your IP if you are building your app on Bubble. And the short answer to this is yes, you own your IP and no, Bubble does not own your IP. So this works the same with pretty much any development platform out there. If you are using Bubble, you're going to be paying a subscription fee for use of the platform for hosting and for all of that. But Bubble doesn't have any ownership over your actual app your intellectual property, the reven revenue you generate, or anything like that. So this one is actually pretty simple. Here's another big risk you might be considering. Are bubble apps scalable? Now there are two answers to this question. The first answer is yes, bubble apps are scalable. The second answer is no. <laughs> but here's what I mean. Whether or not your bubble app performs well and is ultimately scalable comes down to how you build it. This starts really with your database structure. It has a lot to do with your front end design, how you display your data. It has a lot to do with how you create your workflows. You know, you can build any one thing on Bubble in 10 different ways, but nine of those are likely going to be wrong for you and your app and your use case. And only one is going to be right. But if you don't know how to differentiate between those things, then it's easy to unfortunately build your app incorrectly and therefore not have a well-performing app, not have a scalable app. So can you build unscalable apps on Bubble? Absolutely. You know, if you are learning how to build your app and, and just building it as you go, and for, for the first option that you come across to build any specific function or feature, if you're just going with that, you are going to run into issues with performance and scalability later on. You truly have to understand how to leverage Bubble because they do give you a blank canvas. So if you're building incorrectly, even if just unknowingly or unintentionally, 
and you're not monitoring your app's performance or you don't understand how to actually do that, then there will be issues down the road. So the real risk in this situation, in my opinion, is whether or not you want to take the time to learn correct development practices, um, methodologies, and so on. Because you can absolutely build well-performing apps, but you can absolutely build uh, non-well-performing apps. Now, this is a huge topic and there's a lot that goes into it. And so I'm gonna link some other videos in the description below on um, how to build well-performing apps, things you should be considering, those best practices we mentioned. So definitely dig into that further for more info on this. The next potential risk is related to security are bubble apps secure? Now this is another one with two answers, one being yes and one being no, because it really depends on the specific steps you take to make your app secure and private. So here's how to look at this. You have the security of Bubble as a platform. And then on top of that, you have the security of your particular app. Now, the advantage you have when it comes to security and using Bubble is that there are tons and tons and tons of apps that are built on Bubble. And Bubble themselves focus specifically on the security of their platform. And that means that because so many apps are being built on it, they pay a lot of attention to security. Now this is compared to, for example, if you were to have someone build your app, um, code it using a programming language, it's going to be that one person writing out every single line of code. So the security of your app is going to be reliant on that person's shoulders. Whereas when you use Bubble, there are so many apps relying on the platform that they're constantly looking at security. It's an important piece of the puzzle. So you have that at the platform level. But on top of that, you have control over your app's security and privacy, and it's up to you to understand how to put certain privacy measures in place, um, certain user roles in place. You have the capability to do this, but just like you have to make sure you understand how to leverage Bubble as a whole to make sure your app is well performing and scalable, you also have to make sure that you understand how to put your particular security and privacy needs into place. Because if you don't take that into your own hands, then Yes, you're going to have the security of the Bubble platform, but no, you're not going to have your own custom privacy measures. So this is up to you. All right, I hope this was helpful. And if it was, then the content you're about to see on the screen next is going to allow you to take it even further.